So today we're going to demonstrate an LET with the 2.6 millimeter knee double loaded knotless fiber tack anchor. And one of the main advantages of this anchor uh, that we worry about for the LET in combination with the ACL is collision with your ACL femoral tunnel. And really placing an anchor instead of a socket is one strategy to avoid that. So we're on the lateral side of the knee. Here's the fibular head. Here's the lateral epicondyle, and you can see girdies. So we want to center our incision uh, really in that posterior one-third of the IT band around the lateral epicondyle. And you can either do this exposure prior to your ACL. Uh, sometimes with the scope and the fluid, you can get a little bit of swelling, a little bit of um, extra fluid in the bursal tissue, but either way works, works well for the anatomy. Okay, so once we're down to the IT band, um, the landmark that we really want to identify is this posterior border of the IT band. And sometimes we can see biceps femoris quite well. Other times it's a little bit more tendinous here. So one trick is you can actually just feel the IT band rolled edge inferiorly, and then we know we're at the posterior edge. So once we identify that, I'm just going to put a little mark. And then what we want to do is take a strip about 10 millimeters of the posterior one-third of the IT band, so we want to make sure that we keep those Kaplan fibers intact most posteriorly. So we're going to create a strip just a little bit above that. So I'm just going to make two reference dots, and that'll be our 10 millimeter graft width. Then we're just going to make a little nick in the IT band on either side of that 10 millimeters. And then we'll release the rest of the IT band using a scissors. So in terms of landmarks, um, our lateral epicondyle is right here. So I like to make these slits a little bit proximal to it. That way we're not unintentionally cutting our fibular collateral ligament that runs right underneath. So I'll typically liberate uh, our graft proximally first and then lift it up so then we don't have any risk whatsoever of damaging the FCL. In terms of length, uh, I find that being about four centimeters proximal to the lateral epicondyle gives us plenty of graft length to get under the uh, fibular collateral ligament and fix our graft. So once we've identified the proximal length that we need for the graft, then we can transect the IT band so we can get our repair suture in it. So we're just going to come right across that 10 millimeters. So now you can see we've released it proximally. So we're just going to release a little bit of adhesions around just until we have that end of the graph liberated. So once we have control of the IT band, then we'll pass our suture tape fiber loop uh, to help get us control and also pass the graft. So you need about 20 millimeters here from the end. So we'll start there. It's important to get at least 10 millimeters of this IT band. If you get any less of it, it'll become pretty thin and wispy and it won't be the graft quality that you want. So we have nice control of our graft here, and then we'll just cut the needle off at this point. So one advantage of keeping our perforations when we first come in on the IT band proximal is now we can lift it away safely when we're releasing it distally from the underlying FCL. And again, usually after the scope, you have a little bit of fluid here in the bursa. Sometimes people will do the dissection before they do the scope to help with that. But you just want to make sure that you carry out that 10 millimeter width of graft distally. You know you've gotten distal enough when you're past the fibular collateral ligament, which is going to be right in here underneath this bursa. Once we have the graft freed, then we'll try to find our fibular collateral ligament. And there's always a bursa over the top of it. And it's important that you remove this bursa so you can clearly see your anatomic landmarks to pass the graft underneath the fibular collateral ligament. So now we've identified our fibular collateral ligament. So we want to make a little bit of space underneath the ligament. So we'll just use, in this case, a little bit of a right angle. Uh, some people will use some sharp dissection, whatever you feel comfortable with. But we definitely need to make enough room to pass our graft underneath this fibular collateral ligament. OK, so once we get our FCL fully identified. We want to make a little bit of space here. Sometimes passing the graft can be one of the hardest parts of doing this. So what we'll first do is just pass our sutures first through this interval underneath the FCL. Okay, 
And I'll just get control of the sutures here first before we pass our graft. So we trim the graft end just a little bit uh, just to help our graft passage. And then once we've done that, now um, our graft is on the other side of the FCL. Okay, so at this point we're going to identify, right here is our lateral epicondyle. And then we want to be just posterior and proximal to it. So I can really feel it really well in this position. So then we're going to get our guide for our knotless fiber tack. So here in terms of guide position, again, remember your ACL is proximal and posterior. So if anything, we want to be aiming a little bit distal and a little bit anterior to avoid that collision. So we'll just set that anchor, make sure we have good cortical fixation on the bone. And then the colors here are nice and vibrant to help us keep organized. So what we'll do is we'll pass our sutures through one of the loops first. And then their knee would typically be in about 60 degrees of flexion, uh, neutral rotation. I'm going to have assistant hold this. And what I like to do is I like to kind of tension and do a little bit of a push-pull technique to really get that anchor down, really feel it bottom out. And that feels great. So then I'll trim that suture, and then we still have our second loop. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring our graph now double back over on itself for double security and fixation. So now we've got that distal on itself. So now we can tension our second knotless over the graft. We'll pull that tight, kind of a push-pull, and get excellent fixation. So we'll just trim this suture. Now at this point, depending on your graft length, you can decide that's double fixation, so that's fantastic if you wanted to take uh, free fiber wire suture and still tie the graft to itself, you certainly could do that. But this is excellent knotless fixation to help avoid that collision with your ACL femoral socket. So then once we have our final construct tension, you can see here good fixation right over the lateral aspect of the, of the condyle. So then we have our IT band, and we do typically close our IT band, at least the proximal portion. Sometimes a distal portion will leave open just a little bit. We tend to close that with some interrupted absorbable suture uh, to complete the lateral-sided repair.